So normally I walk along this side, down south, and then back up past Sabas, but today I'm going to try something different here in Camp Road. It's really nice with these fishing boats, you see? Zoom in. They go out in droves. Usually they're like four or five tied together. Very, very cool. So they go out about five o'clock at night, which is in the evening. I come back about three or four in the morning, I believe. So they do their whole fishing trip out in the ocean nearby. And that would be very nice. Lady, you just gave me a, a nice smile. Did you see that? I did. Anyway, so now I'm going to go try something else which I haven't done before. You see this here, this old bridge. It's a very old bridge. I don't know how many years, but it looks like maybe 50, 60, 80. I don't know. I know it was broken, it was repaired. Maybe 10, 15 years ago, I heard someone say that. So I'm gonna walk across there. It's busy as hell, because you see the motorbikes coming and going, even tuk-tuks, and it's narrow. And I don't even know there's a sidewalk there. So the change of scenery, and to see something different in Campot, I'm gonna take this route across to the other side. Hello. No need to pay the ferryman. And this here is a lovely little coffee shop in the tourist information center called Durian Coffee. Very, very nice people. Very, very nice place. We have a ticket. We bought earlier. And there's little Mary. Hello. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. So you're very fun Yeah, you She she's a lovely little uh, lady who does all the sells all these trips to the tourists, you know, river cruises, boat trips and whatnot. Go to cooking classes, kayak and so on. Anyway, so here we are at the old bridge. And as you can see, it's 5, 5 p.m. So rush hour. It's like everything is coming and going here. And nobody's walking except for me. Yeah, yeah. Hope my phone doesn't get snatched, but I think I'm okay in Campbell. You don't want to be doing this in Phnom Penh because your phone definitely would get lifted. Snitch, snatch, out of the hand it goes. And they're fast, of course, it's on, the, on the motorbike. Up there you can see the heavy clouds above Boko Mountain Range, which starts from all the way over there and goes all the way down there south towards the ocean near to uh, Sinukville. So yeah, as you can see, this is pretty crazy, but fun. You got a good view of the riverside, Starbucks. Down there, you can see the now famous seahorse fountain. And people come from hundreds and hundreds of kilometers by car or bus to visit that that statue that they recently built here in Campos. Yeah, so lots of upgrades happened in Campot with the Starbucks, with the Seals Fountain. Beautiful, beautiful bright shiny lights at night. One big problem is still this monstrosity here. It's been sitting there for years and years. Horrible monstrosity with a massive building that's completely unfinished. I saw people, and there's another one over there, which is obviously an eyesight, sore sight, sore for the eyes, as I say, and not good. So whoever started that construction, finish it got screwed so this is a so a little bit of a different side of campot over there you also see right you see there's like uh, seafood restaurants there and you can drive along that side but that's not as pretty i'm told as on this side and over there you can see the, the new bridge it's a much more modern, stronger and safer bridge. So I'm not sure I'm going to walk much further here. It looks rather intimidating, to be honest. There is no pavement. There is no safe place for me to go. So I'm just going to turn around. I don't want to get run over because the Cambodian drivers, as you can see, are notorious for 
not respecting for not respecting um, pedestrians at all. Basically, they don't stop for pedestrians. They don't even acknowledge you as, a, as, a, as an existence. It's a big, big problem here. So, if you start walking across the street, they'll do everything to dodge you like a bullet, and they just just uh, or they just like don't look at you. So you've got to jump out of the way. Big, big problem here. Um, people don't know how to drive, unfortunately. Of course, none of the motorbike drivers have licenses because they're 125cc, which don't need a license. And that is a little bit of a problem because nobody knows the rules. The world traffic rules, not just country by country. Every country has the same. Whether you're right-hand side or left-hand side drive. And one thing is the same in every single place in the world. Pedestrians have right of way no matter where. Except on the highway, of course. Where pedestrians shouldn't be anyway. So, anyway. That's that and the problem I can't really do much about. Or anything. We got a new 7-Eleven over there too. Which is, uh, I had to say, I grabbed another American import, selling nothing but junk, soft drinks, candy, toiletries, and junk food, and beer and crap like that, cigarettes. Up here, you've got some food stalls, and there we've got the mon monstrosity again. Uh, yeah, over there, you've got a very nice, and here you got, I'll just show you this bit too, because it's quite interesting. They built like a little, a little campot riverside beach this used to be shacks and houses and stuff they tore it all down and as you can see now people are walking here it's not the most comfortable gravel to walk on but you can hello so look so they got the and these these big tubes here apparently there's one two three spots where they're putting up these huge tubes and they're going to be big 30 meter Tall clocks. Why? I don't know, but I think it's just another one of these attractions that the Campot province government has put together or incentive for people to come and look at because the Cambodian people love this kind of stuff. Like the seahorse fans in. I mean, I, I've seen seahorse fans or whatever fans everywhere in the world, and if I see one today, I don't really look at it because I don't think it's anything that special, but that's not the same. For well, the Cambodian people, they love that kind of stuff, which is okay, you know? And the stop, you should have seen it when the Starbucks opened. Oh my God, Starbucks opened. It was like, I wasn't here, but I saw it on Facebook. It was like maybe 500, well, one, 600, 700 uh, meter queue to get in the place. It's not exactly big inside. It maybe has 20 or 30 seats. Uh, yeah, maybe more, 40, 50 seats with 20, 20, 20 tables or so inside and air conditioned and outside. But it's nothing but a candy store disguised as a coffee shop, Starbucks, you know? The only health foods in there, or foods without sugar that don't make you sick, diabetic and obese, are black coffee, Americano, espresso, and maybe the cappuccino and latte. Halfway okay, even though the milk isn't the best. So yeah. <laughs> Everything else in Starbucks is junk. All the other coffees with cream and the syrups and all the foods they serve there. They serve nothing but pastries and sandwiches and, and baked goods like that, all full of sugar and, and junk. Well, that's not good. And here, are, here are some very nice smoothie shops that I frequently go to. They have uh, avocado mangi, it's called 102. Here, outside coffee store, also very good. Anyway, so yes, I prefer to frequent the local coffee shops and cafes and do not go to the foreign ones, be that American, Chinese, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, on top of that, why would I pay $3.50 for a cappuccino or something like that, whereas I have to pay $1.25 right here in the durian coffee shop in the tourist information center yeah that's what it costs $1.25 and the coffee is freaking fantastic Cambodian coffee made with a great Italian Conti machine couldn't get any better so that's the way to go my friends if I were you if I were you would 
when traveling, and I always do this because I travel all the time, I always stay true to local. I go to the local market, shop for the ladies there, buy the fruit there, or vegetables or meats or whatever. Meat's a bit tricky. Well, I buy the meat local too, a shop called CP, CP Foods. They sell everything. Uh, all kinds of meats, really fresh, good stuff. Beef, pork, ground, ground beef, ground pork, chicken breast, chicken wings, ch uh, chicken legs, all kinds of beef cuts, uh, pork chops, and so on. So really good. Eggs too. Yeah, so that's just a little tour around the riverside here. The camper, I'll be leaving here in a couple of days. I'm going, taking a trip to KL Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. That's going to be a lot of fun. So yes, I look forward to that. I'll be broadcasting and sending my videos out from, well, for my trip, leaving Cambodia. Do what, one nice for a long one. No, no, I'm okay. <laughs> That's the only problem. They took two drivers there to stop. My My friend, I'm not a tourist. I'm not a tourist. And I'm making a video. You are a YouTuber. Yes, exactly. So now you just showed the world how annoying tuk-tuk drivers are. You jump at everybody. You have to say, sir, are you a tourist? Are you interested? Not blah, 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 blah. Okay. okay? All right. So I'm just trying to teach the guy the lesson. He sees what I'm doing, but he just jumps in. Anyway, no, no problem. All right, so there's a little good morning temple guest house that I don't stay in. I work there on the right-hand side. Great little uh, sofa area and comfortable, cheap place to have coffee as well. $1.50 and to work from. All right then, that's Rob here in Cambodia. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.